morning, everyone. Uh, this is a time I uh, often not hear on Facebook Live, but I'm so excited to meet you here today and talk about something that not only is super relevant, and I had planned this talk before the relevancy in the news lately of alopecia and hair loss has become such a topic of conversation, but I know many of you listening out there have either experienced this or someone you care about has experienced this, and I feel like um, many, many more of my patients uh, are seeing issues with hair loss. So I wanted to talk about that subject today. And I couldn't think of a better person to bring in than my amazing stylist, Gwen, who's at In Vogue Salon. She's live on site today um, with lots of great solutions. Super excited to introduce her in just a minute to talk about some of those solutions. Um, but first, just a little background. You can hear me here on uh, YouTube. You can also catch this podcast on anywhere you listen to podcasts, Stitcher, iTunes, et cetera. And uh, of course, right now we're live on Facebook. This is Dr. Jill Live. You can find all of my blogs, articles, and about 10 years of information on my website at jillcarnahan.com. All kinds of free resources there. And I actually just a few months ago wrote an article about causes of hair loss. So if you want more information or want to read um, in depth there, you can find that on my blog at jillcarnahan.com. Um, today, we're going to talk about some amazing salon products and solutions that Gwen has and takes care of her clients with. But you can also find products and solutions on Dr. Jill Health. Dot com. There's um, one particular product we, we actually use for hair loss, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. So excited, Gwen, to have you here today. We met a couple years ago, kind of right in the midst of the pandemic, and um, you have been amazing in my life because I feel like you've the quality of the hair, my thickness, um, the health of my hair to a new level. And it's been so fun to work with you and to do try new things and to learn new things. And I just consider you an expert in the field and obviously an advanced um, stylist. Um, you have a, a long client list and it's, um, it's, I just feel lucky and blessed to have you in my life in that way. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm been looking forward to having this conversation with you and just gathering client needs and solutions for our clients to have thicker, fuller, more beautiful hair. Yeah. So it's, again, it's so exciting. What I wanted to just share today on all levels is, um, first of all, I might just share just a little bit about the causes of hair loss. Cause I believe that, um, lots and lots of people are experiencing problems with thinning hair, hair loss, even complete alopecia, which is, you know, totalis where you lose everything on your scalp. Um, I also just want to share briefly, I have been there. You may think right now, you know, I have this lovely hair that's all growing out, but I wanted to share, Gwen, I don't know if I've even shared this picture with you just really quick and tell my story 20 years ago. I think many of you know I've had cancer, um, but this was me right after chemo. Um, I don't know if y'all can see that picture totally bald. Um, that's one of these types of hair loss called um, alopecia. Um, and I'm sorry, it's, it's the alopecia that happens after ke chemo. So you, the chemo causes the hair follicles to fall out and you lose all your hair. So all this to say, I actually have been completely bald before in my um, 20s when I had cancer and chemotherapy. And I know what it's like. I mean, it. I told Gwen the other day as we were talking and when I was in her chair getting styled, I said, you know, it's, I had breast cancer. So I had scars and, and surgeries on my breasts, which as a woman is very personal part of my you know, image and, and how I feel about myself. But the hardest thing about that cancer was not the surgeries, not the impact of scars on my breast. It was having no hair. And I know maybe some of you have dealt with that and, and dealt with it better than I did, but it was really hard to go out bald. And obviously at the time I had wigs, I had all kinds of things I could do. But I remember one particular incident when I was going through the airport security and they're like, oh, ma'am, take off your hat. And I had a hat that had beautiful hair. So I looked really normal. And I was like, uh, okay. And I take off my hat and I'm completely bald. And it was just like, there's a lot of shame and embarrassment in that situation walking through. And obviously they didn't know that they weren't trying to um, single me out, but it was one of those things that sticks in my mind because there's something about our hair that makes us feel human and beautiful and, and connected. And I think, especially as women, you know, um, for me, this, it's just lovely to have hair again. <laughs> I also um, always joke because I found a word at that time, bald is one thing, right? It's just kind of this, you know, four letter word. Um, but there's another word that means hairless and it's called glaborious. And I always use that word <laughs> because I thought it was so much more fun to say, well, I'm glaborious than bald. Um, but like I said, this is close to my heart because I have been there and I have experienced that. 
um, people can have all kinds of types of hair loss. And I'll just share a couple of those because part of the issue with hair loss is figuring out what might be going on and what kinds of hair loss might be happening. Because if you can get to the root cause, then you can um, have a solution. One of the things that is happening a lot right now is uh, telogen effluvium. What happens with most of our hair is about 90% of our hair is in this growing phase for anywhere from two to eight years. And it's just growing, doing its thing. And then when it gets to the end of its cycle, it goes into this telogen phase and it falls out. So usually only about 10% of our hair is falling out at one time. And we notice there's a few hairs in the shower or the sink, but it's not like we're getting handfuls. But Gwen, I'm sure you've been hearing, have you been hearing more and more clients with handfuls of hair or a lot more hair than usual, like falling out? I'd love to hear like when you have clients in the chair, what kind of things are you hearing there in the salon for hair loss and experience of your clients? Absolutely. It's one of the main causes that motivated me to want to have a conversation and seek out your expertise in this field, because after two decades in my industry, it's a huge concern and growing and growing even more. I hear women say things, you know, they're, it's not as full as it used to be. They're, you know, just as really thinned out over time. Sometimes there's scalp exposure. Sometimes it's just the overall condition, the luster, the density, the fullness, the body that seems to be changing over time. And there's various factors and they're looking to me for answers. And that's, again, you know, why I look to you to help me help them with why is it happening? And also what can we do about it to help help everybody look and feel their best. I love that. And I promise you hang in because we've got some amazing solutions from Gwen. She actually obviously has a hair model there with the, the wig. And we're going to talk in depth about what, what you can do if you had hair loss. Just briefly, if you're having this so intelligent effluvium, if you've ever been pregnant and three or four months after you lose a lot of hair, that's the same thing that happens with this. It can also happen after an intense fever or illness. So I'm seeing a lot of people that got sick with COVID and two or three months later, if you look back, one of the first questions I ask my patients is if they have a lot of hair loss, they say, when did it start? And they might say, okay, it started in January. So I said, go back three months from when it started. Did something happen in your life, a death of a loved one, um, a high fever or illness, or some other thing that happened? Because often and they can pinpoint it back to some event in their life, like being ill, and then they lost the hair. And what I can usually say in that case, if I look at their scalp and there's no big bald patches, which is a whole nother topic, um, I can tell them, you know what, your hair's going to grow back. So if you're listening now and that fits you, it will grow back. It's just that all of a sudden things shifted from that 10% of hair loss all of a sudden to about 50%. So it feels like tons of hair is coming out, but all those hairs are just in that cycle of, of falling out instead of growth. They will come back. And it may take a little while as far as for you to get that fullness back, because all of a sudden 50% of your hair is just starting over. But the truth is it will come back and in the coming years. Other thing I see is uh, nutrient deficiencies and things where whether you have inflammation or gut issues, we need zinc and selenium and vitamin A and vitamin D and biotin and choline. So I always make sure nutrient wise, the patients have the right nutrients because a lot of these, um, whether you have a gut disorder where you're having malabsorption or other things, you can have issues with nutrients. And if you don't have the basics in your diet and too much is sometimes just as bad as too little. So if you have excess toxicity, of copper or zinc or selenium that can go that way too. A few of the other really common causes would be issues with hormones and thyroid. And of course, if you haven't had your doctor check your thyroid hormone, like TSH and free T4 and free T3, those are some of the really important things to check and make sure a lot of issues with low T4 will cause hair loss. But if you excessively get um, prescription medication for thyroid and your high birth thyroid, that can also cause hair loss. So either end of the spectrum with thyroid can cause issues. And finally, as we age, I'm in my forties, um, our hormones change. And with women, especially loss of estrogen or menopause can cause thinning of hair, lack of luster. Some of the things that you talked about, Gwen, that you hear. And then there's something else that's really, it, we call it male pattern baldness, but women can have this too. And it's, if you start converting your testosterone into dihydroxy testosterone or DHT, this can cause a hair loss. that's kind of on the sides and the scalp here. So it thins out and there's usually a little bit of a peak here. You can actually we look at it probably Gwen and tell the kind of male pattern baldness and some women get this too and this can happen if you are a lot of women now supplement with hormone replacement therapy and if you get testosterone and your body converts it to DHT or dihydroxy these are measurable in the blood so other tests that you can ask your doctor for so you can check all the vitamins I mentioned in the blood you can check the um, testosterone estrogen DHEA cortisol 
and the DHT, the dihydroxytestosterone. And then, like I mentioned, the thyroid, those are some critical things you can do. So basically we have this falling out from illness, the telogen effluvium, we have hormone related thyroid, adrenal and female and male hormones. And this other spectrum, this is probably the most difficult one and I'll briefly mention it and then we'll go to solutions is the autoimmune or the scarring alopecia. So sometimes people can get a disease like lupus or um, fungal infections or things. And these can cause scarring of the hair follicles and hair loss. Usually this is patchy and there's big bald spots and they're kind of shiny. You don't see any of the, the follicles there anymore. This can be permanent. Um, and this is much more scary because you're getting these big patches and you don't see any new hair growth. Now, even with that, there's a lot you can do with steroids to calm inflammation with functional medicine, looking at the root cause and reversing inflammation. I have a 14 year old patient who lost all of her hair after a mold exposure, and that can be related to high histamines and issues with molds. I remember also after I had mold, I lost about an inch, half inch of my scalp hair because it kind of pulled back and fell out and it all came back in after, but histamine, which is part of and mast cell activation can also cause hair loss. So that's a very brief, but very broad overview of a lot of the things that we're seeing. And Gwen, would you say in the last two years with the pandemic and more and more people experiencing COVID, is that one of the things you're seeing is um, as a hair loss in the last two years even? I think it's increasing. Stress levels are up. People have gone through a lot in the last couple of years and it's showing in their hair. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about solutions. I want to dive into some of the things that say someone comes in, like I say, I came in either, you know, uh, post chemo thinning or, um, and maybe we talk about someone who really has the scarring, the, the laboriousness where their massive hair loss and their hair is so thin, they need a real solution for that. And then we can talk about products and options for if they're just thinning or lacking luster. Absolutely. One of the things I wanted to start out with was a couple of images of clients that are before and after, just so someone could imagine, what could that look like for me? And what's out there that could be a solution to get more information to our clients? I wanted to show this picture here. This is a before and after, you can oh, see. Yeah. So this was brought by an educator from Hair Talk, and this is featuring a product called Hairwear. So it's a semi-permanent piece that is applied to the top to involve more density and more volume on the top of the head. So I'll show you what this piece looks like. So essentially, this can be worn semi-permanently or daily to take on and off and for temporary wear or for monthly maintenance. It can be applied in various different ways and this comes in various different sizes and it's able to instantly change the way that your hair looks and likely how you feel. So it's gonna be applied over the top and a stylist that is trained in this method is going to apply this. They're going to custom order the color, cut it and blend it. And so you're gonna be looking very natural. Wow, I love that. And do you see a lot more like on this scalp area where it's thinning up top? Is that where the, you know, there's, there's multiple places that people can be lacking density. It can be on the top. It can be on the sides, the bottom. Sometimes it's very obvious in one specific spot, which is where the topper would be a great option just to kind of get awareness out and know that that's an option for people. Um, I'll go ahead and show the second image to give you another client that this would be an example for. So you can see with her hair, she is really starting to get a separation on her part line. So there's more scalp exposure and thinness in general to the point where it's almost getting to a balding situation. Yeah. So again, a top applied and instantly changes the way that the hair looks. That's amazing. And it looks so natural. Like even the color there, the um, ombre kind of blending. It's uh, obviously you guys are a pro at that, <laughs> but that looks amazing. <laughs> I think that the client wants to definitely feel secure that no one's going to notice. It's going to be very discreet and very natural looking and that they don't have to share unless they choose to. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I love that. What else would you say as far as people, um, what about just all over, um, like for me, it's interesting because even this last year, you and I talked, I think it was in around September, October, I started having like a lot of hair falling out of the top and I started using several different products. Um, and things just to, um, and I think in that case, it might've been the little conversion to DHT, stress, post COVID, like a bunch of different things are playing into that. Um, and now it feels like it's starting to come back to normal. What kind of products or recommendations would you have there? So I'd like to showcase just a couple of products for us. 
because the needs are so diverse and different things that people go through. So anywhere from overall thinning, wanting more volume, dealing with breakage, dealing with loss of density, loss of fullness. Uh, Kara Stoss came out with a product called Densifique. So looking for thicker, fuller hair. I'll go ahead and just give you an image of this product. So this is for clients who are thinning and just would like to have more fullness, more body um, over time. So this is a shampoo. There's a full line of products that they can use. This is just one example that can really help increase that in uh, hair growth for clients. Um, secondly, some people deal with hair falling out. They might have a lot of hair in their brush, possibly in the shower. Sometimes it's even on their clothing items. So Genesis, this is another product that Kerastase makes. And this one is going to really, really help reduce the breakage in your hair and the hair fall. That's been very, very common in clients I've noticed. Um, initial yeast, it is a super hair serum. So this is something that I think would be a go-to for anybody just looking to have more hair, healthier hair, fuller hair. And this is gonna be applied weekly and over about two months period of time will make your hair feel thicker and feel fuller. Now, if you're wanting to kind of take the next step and just you know maximize everything that's out there and available, uh, Kerastas makes a product called Specifique. So these are gonna be scalp treatments that are applied to your hair weekly and are gonna be kind of like a super serum so you can grow as much hair as possible. And these are suitable for women, they're suitable for men. And it's really gonna to talk to when you're dealing with something kind of along these lines where the hair is spreading apart, more scalp exposure, and they just like to see even small hairs start to cover and give more, um, more density, more fullness. These treatments um, are applied to the scalp and can really help with that. Well, love it. And I've used some of those. I love the pink one. Um, in fact, this yes, one right now. <laughs> oh, we know, also the is that there's just such a variety of products that can be customized and used for people. So it's not something that you have to suffer with and there are solutions. Yeah, and there's a solution. Um, let's see, Kerastas has that uh, blue one. And do you remember, is that, because I love that one too. I was, I've been using that. I was going to share with you the two. Um, I'll share another screenshot because those Kerastas, I literally have those in my shower. I love yeah. them. <laughs> and, Absolutely. You know, um, there's also, uh, I mentioned earlier, I have a product of my own that I've been found really helpful. I don't know if you guys can see that, that rapid regrowth serum down here at the bottom, I'll try to blow that up. Um, for DHT, dihydroxytestosterone, if you're having the male pattern stuff, um, that can be really helpful at blocking the DHT. So I've, if I found in the beginning when I was having that thinning, I used that serum. Now I'm using the Kerastase serum and it's just great for maintenance, but it's really, I feel like I have my hair back. It's like 80% back to where it was. So super, super important. And those serums, there's also, um, I brought these to show, these are actually in real time. These are um, prescription peptides that also work on the scalp level. So we have all these things and I literally combine them with patients. You know, you can use a great, like a line like Kerastas. You can use um, some of the growth serums like the Dr. Jill line. And then these peptides are super powerful. They're by prescription only. And they also will enhance. One of them is particular, like if you really have lost your hair, like you said, it'll help the regrowth of the hair at that follicular level. And the other ones are those dihydroxytestosterone blockers. And I think a lot of even the over-the-counter products have those DHT blockers in them because it's such a common thing. And when we get these women to menopause, what happens is our estrogen usually drops that can cause thinning and lack of luster of the hair. So one of the things you can do with your doctor is you can talk about hormone replacement therapy, because if you check and your levels are really low, like we said, low estrogen, you might want to replace that because that's going to be something that really helps skin and hair. A lot of the elasticity of our skin and the um, strength of our hair is related to hormones. So as we go through menopause and those drop, um, you can replace those at the physical level. And then like we said, thyroid is a key. And some of the ingredients that make thyroid hormone are zinc and selenium. Those are absolutely key. So if you don't even know where to start with nutrients at the very basis, I would say usually zinc is appropriate, vitamin D and vitamin A um, can be appropriate. And um, interestingly too, some of the fat-soluble fat vitamins, which are A, D, K, and E, 
All of those are important for hair growth. So if you have an issue with your gut where you're not absorbing things, or you've had Crohn's or colitis, or you've had gut inflammation, sometimes over time, just the lack of nutrients because you're not absorbing them will lead to hair thinning and loss. Um, what about, this is one that's real common and I've had this off and on where I just feel like, oh, it's kind of dry and brittle and lacking luster. What would you recommend or what would you do with someone who has just dry, brittle or kind of lack of shine? Anything in particular there that you would recommend? Yeah, dryness is just very common for our climate and I'm noticing it in almost every client that I have in the salon. So I would say a deep conditioning mask would be a great place to start, something that you can do weekly uh, and just apply to your ends, leave it in about 15 minutes. Kerastas has 10 different ones to choose from and just really get your hair looking lots of shine and beautiful condition. It does. It's amazing when I come back from the salon. I'm like, I don't know what you did, Gwen, but it's all the well, in, in salon, we carry fusio dose treatment. So if you're just looking to address a variety of concerns, we have products that are for thinning, for uh, losing hair, just wanting more body. We also have them for dryness. We have them for brittle ends if your hair is splitting or breaking or damaged from chemicals. Uh, we have a Fusio dose product that you can have applied in the salon, whether you're going to have your hair blown out, if you're going to have a color service done, and it's going to really improve the condition of your hair instantly and last over a month. Yeah, and that's the truth. Like literally, I don't know what is in that stuff. And I was like, oh, what is this? This is amazing. Magic serum. Yeah, you also gave me a serum. Um, I don't know if you remember, it was a Kerastase, the real shiny stuff. It's in a bigger bottle, kind of the, what is that? Because I love that. I've been using that in my hair. Fiber Architect, a blue yes. product. Uh, dual uh, treatment serum. So it's really going to address any sort of damage from heat. Uh, if you're overstyling your hair, excessive brushing, or if you just have general hair that tends to split and break on the ends, some hair just naturally does that. So that's a really great solution. I love to apply it dry after your hair has been blown out or styled and just absorb that into your hair. And it also has heat protection up to 400 degrees. Oh, wow. That's amazing because you can like get you said, yeah. In Colorado, you have an extra hard job, I think, because it is so I always go to, you know, say I'm flying to speak in Orlando or somewhere where it's much more moist, literally my skin and my hair. I'm like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> it's like new because that moisture in the environment. And we just happen to live in an incredibly dry climate that's um, <sighs> out there. If you're not using really good sunscreen, it is, I mean, all of these things that we do and the moisture, it's such a big deal, especially in Colorado where we live <laughs> because it, it really is common that people have both issues at the same time. Sometimes yeah. what's going on at the scalp can be completely different than what's going on at the ends. So they might be experiencing dry ends and also thinning at the same time. So they might have oil through the top, which can clog the follicles and prevent hair from growing, and then also have dryness and breakage at the bottom. Yeah. And that's where those treatments can probably really work because you can the treat the hair. Yeah, the Fusio dose are excellent. Uh, we have, you know, a variety of products. There's even specific shampoos that will help treat the condition of your scalp. We have scrubs, any sort of different things to address what might be happening at the root, in the mids, and on the ends. Wow, this is amazing. And I know super helpful to people who are experiencing this. And like I said, you know, the main thing that we want to do is bring hope and, and solutions wherever you're at on that spectrum of hair loss. Like I said, I've been there too. I've been bald. <laughs> so I know what it's like to not have hair at all. Um, any last words of wisdom, Gwen, or things that we didn't talk about that would be ideas or solutions for patients or clients, I guess, in your case? <laughs> would like to just encourage anybody listening or even, you know, if it's a friend or family member to not be shy against asking for the things that are concerning to you, whether it's booking a consultation with a stylist or if you're already seeing someone regularly and, you know, bring up the things that are bothering you because likely they're bothering other people and your stylist like myself, I've been educated on multiple different hair extension methods, topper methods, products, even sometimes just blow dry tips and a Fusio dose. You never know what can make a difference. So I would suggest a complimentary consultation. I would do that. Absolutely. I'd love to meet anybody who's interested in that or just wants to talk about it because there's so many things out there that can really change how you look and feel about your hair. Gwen, you're amazing. I know you've changed my life um, because when you feel you know, like your hair looks good and you feel good, it really makes a difference. And as I've been, you know, doing live and talking and speaking, it's, it's really one of those things that's kind of in the background and it's sometimes hard for people to talk about, but it really does matter. And it makes a difference in your confidence and how you appear. So thank you not only for what you do for all of your clients, but personally, I am so grateful to have you in my life and as an expert in my hair <laughs> to help oh, me love so and even add some pretty color. 
<laughs> We've been experimenting with colors and it's been so fun. Um, so thank you for taking the time this morning to share with us. Thank you for all your expertise. And um, Gwen is at En Vogue Salon in Denver. So if you're local, as she mentioned, um, she is one of the best. Um, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much.